Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is this is 4F Beauty and hopefully you are watching me in black and white because this is, as you would have been able to tell from the thumbnail, of the title and if you've read any of it, the description. And this is the review of the Miali Yasmin palette. Now Miali is a new but old but new indie brand. Uh, it is the phoenix that has risen from the ashes of blush time. So, is this as good quality as blush time? Has she managed to produce an interesting colour story that's different from ones that she's done before? What do I blether on about this time? All these things and many more are answered in this film. Uh, so as I have said for some considerable time, oft here echoed elsewhere on less imaginative channels, but they don't have uh, Sammy the Sloth Straw uh, to accompany them when they advise you to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. I'm pretty sure I'm skew whiffed today, but we're going to have to deal with that for the minute because I'm just in too much pain to fiddle about with that blasted tripod. You will have seen from the intro that I have got my first Miali Beauty product, which is the Yasmin palette which is named after Salma's mother. Now, just give you a look at the inside. Um, she's got other palettes out, but they didn't really call to me because they were similar to um, other palettes that she'd released on Blush Tribe and one of them was pretty much just a rainbow palette. This one appealed to me though because it's got the sort of burgundy through to orange on the top row and then it's got these sort of orangey grungy, not orangey, olivey grungy going through yellows into this kind of, I'm not really sure what colour I'd call that but I like it. Um, and like a, a baby nappy poop brown. <laughs> Um, and then the bottom row has got kind of a really lovely purple that I like the look of. Um, only the one green and it's a shimmer. But it just, something about this palette just appealed to me. Um, now, Salma used to own Blush Tribe. And you'll know I've got a lot of stuff from Blush Tribe. Because I loved her quality. Um... Due to the COVID stuff, she had to close because her supplier went bust in China. Um, so that was it. As far as she was concerned, she'd recently been married. She was going to just, you know, have some time off, think about what she wanted to do. And so many of us were like, oh no, we're really going to miss you. We love your stuff. We love the you know, the, the, the colour theories that you come out with and it's such good quality please don't go so bless her she started researching other suppliers uh, ended up finding one and has now launched Miali Beauty the reason that she renamed it rather than just relaunching Blush Tribe is because it is a different supplier so I'm guessing 
the formula is going to be different. I had a code, non-affiliated, 10% discount with Blush Tribe, which was BOMBER, all caps. I tested it when I bought this. It does still work. However, before I recommend to you to use my code, I need to try the palette and see whether I'm happy to recommend it. I have done swatches, put that up there for you. Um, Manaza, this sort of duochrome one at the bottom here, which is kind of white with a pinky lilac -y shift, didn't show up too well on the swatching. Um, but at the end of the day, all the swatching does really is show you what colour it's going to look like on my skin tone. It's not an indication of how it's going to perform on the eyes. And on my eyes, I have, as usual, put my Crown Pebble Primer. Um, this is still a teaching channel. And by virtue of that, I'm going to stick some text up on screen because... I'm still getting complaints about stuff that I mentioned at the beginning of all of my films. So maybe if people read it, it'll sink in. So here's your text. Basically, I am still a teaching channel, so because of my chronic pain and because I want beginners to be able to keep up with me, I go at a speed that they can keep up with. If that means I'm going too slowly for you, then by all means, speed me up. There is a speed widget, feel free to use it. The other thing, I get fewer complaints about the length of my films and the speed of my films now, but I am still getting comments from people saying, you zoom in too close, when you're looking down to put more pigment on your brush or find another product or a different brush, always see is your hairline. There is a reason that I zoom in so close that you only see my eyes on screen during the application process. I am aware, you know, I'm 46, I need glasses to drive. There are a good number of people out there who are 40 plus that have eyesight issues. I mean, there's younger people than me with eyesight issues. So if you've taken your glasses off to apply makeup and you're following me on a phone screen, which is what I do when I'm following a tutorial or watching a tutorial or a review of a product, I want them to be able to see what I'm doing. So that means my eyes need to fill as much of the screen as possible. This does mean that when I'm looking down you will get the view of my beautiful widow's peak. You're welcome. Namaste. Hello. I'm back again. I'm about to disappear for a previous me though because as part of my teaching in this channel I include a section where I discuss the difference between deep set and hooded lids and the difference in eyeshadow application relating to both. They are often confused because eyeshadow wears very similarly on both eye types throughout the day but the actual application process is very different. I will be zoomed up nice and close, so it's just my eyes on screen. Once I've finished chatting to you about the application, I will be back at the other side of it to apply some of this to my eyes. Well, my eyelids. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. 
but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid it tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again. It tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to start off with a floofy brush. It's got one protruding piece of brush hair, which if I don't take that out with my tweezers, is going to annoy the ever-living crap out of me. Are you seeing my hairline again? <clears throat> Um, I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush. Um, 
a medium sized fluffy brush and then I'm going to go down to a smaller more tapered one so I'm going to start off with this one then I'm going to move to this one you can see the difference in the width of the head whatever size of the head of the brush that's how far it will blend out so for example if I show you this one this is one of my larger ones you can see whatever size the width of the brush head that's how far it will go out now I always hold the brush at the end so you put as little pressure on as possible treat it like a magic wand not a pencil unless you're doing very very close work and rather than the windshield wiper that you see all these 20 year olds doing I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of blending which is basically natural turns towards the nose fleck it when we get there and reverse turns to come back again and the reason we do this I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers who've always been slim that have looser skin on their eyelids. By doing this circular movement rather than the straight back and forth, you're less likely to get that giveaway tiger striping or barcoding um, where your eyeshadow skips because basically the the lid has folded over on itself. Right, I'm going to start off with Flamingo, which is that colour that I wasn't quite sure what to call it, but I liked it. So I'm just going to dip my brush in there, tap off. Reasonable amount of to fall out, I don't know if you can see that. But I just tap back off onto the uh, pan and then just pick up the loose stuff. Pick up the kick up for the second go around. And I'm going to start this just above where my natural crease would be. I always start on the outside edge because if you do deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to blend it out without your nose in the way. I'm going to take this kind of two thirds of the way along and then just sort of peter out with it. This is a really nice colour. This is blending on really nice. Well you can see how easily that's that's gone on. I do suffer here and here with dry patches which can sometimes affect how eyeshadow performs but this has had no problem at all. In blending that, that really is actually a very nice pink. It does remind me of flamingos actually. Now I always do the other eye, not at the same time, but sort of consecutively, so that um, I can check them because unless you're Someone like a certain Mr. James Charles, um, and you Photoshop your end result, your eyes are not symmetrical. They are not going to look the same both sides. Not exactly the same, anyway. So, and some days you'll find that one eyelid is puffier than the other. Or, so, you can be doing exactly the same shape on each eye, only to find that when you relax your brows and have a look at it, it looks different. And if you already put other colours on top and blended them, it makes it more difficult to spot that. So you can see, it looks like I've come further up this side, because you can see more of it than you can here. So obviously this eyelid's a bit puffier today. So I just need to bring the middle bit up, just fractionally. So we've got the same shape both sides. And like I said, if I'd put subsequent colours on and blended with them, 
you wouldn't necessarily be able to pick that up. Okay, well I'm really, really happy with that first colour that I blended out. I'm going to use a clean washcloth to clean the brush with. Um, I used to use colour switches, but they are far too harsh on your bristles, um, especially if you're using natural hair. Uh, I think this one's synthetic, it feels synthetic. It doesn't feel prickly enough to be natural hair. Right, I'm going to go down to the smaller blending brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into, I think I'm going to go into Red Kite. I'm just going to, if you're going to blend two colours together, Start off with your brush half on the colour you want to blend with and half on the bare skin. Unless you're looking for a more editorial look where you want a harsh line between the two because that will give you a much cleaner blend. So that you don't get that Kind of delineation of where one colour stops and the next one starts, they just flow into each other. Kind of like that. I like that. So, how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it's been a good one for you. If it hasn't, I hope tomorrow is a better one. And if you're at the start of your day, in the shower, like Christopher J. M. U. A. watches me in the shower, or doing your makeup, like the lovely Laura from Gold Star Work, or perhaps you watch me over breakfast, or are you doing the washing up? Either way, whatever you're doing, if you're at the start of your day, I hope you have a really, really fabulous one. And like I said, if your day doesn't go well, it's always tomorrow. Let's hope that one's a better one, huh? Right, I'm going to clean this brush off and I'm going to go in with a different colour. go in with Uzma, which is that baby nappy shit brown. And I'm going to blend that across the top there and into that pink on the outer edge. And again, half on the pink, half on the bare skin. I think really it probably would have been better if I'd done those two shades the other way around, but okay. I'm one of these people, regular viewers will know this, but if you're new, I'm one of these people who, unless I've got a specific look in mind, i.e. if I'm doing one of my pick series or I'm doing um, one of my Zodiac series, or I'm, you know, recreating a certain look from somebody else, which if I do that I always tag them for the inspiration, or, you know, if it's a palette bingo thing, I'm the sort of person, I just sit here and go, what colour do I fancy playing with now? I'm very much that kind of person, that annoying sort of person who doesn't really have a plan and sometimes the looks go amazing and other times you think, 
Oh, that was a mistake. But so far, so good. I'm liking this. Just going to get the previous brush with nothing on it. And just really soften the colours on the top there. The smaller the brush, normally the denser the colour that you apply. So if you want to soften the colour up or blend an edge out a bit more, just go for a slightly bigger brush. Or a slightly looser packed one. And hopefully you can see that that has actually made a little bit of a difference. Just clean the excess off of that brush again. I'm slowly getting back into the routine of filming. Um, it, it may be a little while before I get back to doing my three uploads a week because um, I'm still really in a lot of pain with my legs. Um, they're keeping me awake. I'm just going into uh, Zatoon, which is this gorgeous yellow. I wanted to start filming earlier because as usual I've been up since half four with the hubby when the alarm went off. But it's thankfully a cooler day today. And it's raining. Um, and the light in my kitchen. I've got the strip lights behind the camera. But even so, the the natural light coming into my kitchen was dark. Um, and I didn't want to have to put the electric light on because I wanted to... I like working in natural light just with these brighter lights behind the camera because I feel that you get a, a better indication of the actual colours in the palette. Um, you know, if, if I'd had to put the overhead light on, that's a little bit more yellowy tinged because obviously my LED strip lights that I've got behind the camera are just pure white. Um, but the overhead lights are slightly yellow tinge so it does actually affect I mean I, I try and that's the only tweaks that I make to my film is if I have had to film with the overhead light on I will try and adjust the exposure so that the the colour of the um, the shadows is as accurate as possible um, and I'll sometimes change the brightness and stuff for the same reason but that, that is the only changes that I make to mine. I, you know, anything you see me create with practice, there's no reason you can't get exactly the same look. And obviously, you don't have to use the same... Um, if you haven't got this particular palette, but you've got these colours, there's no reason you can't recreate it using those colours. Right, I'm going to go into... on this and I'm going to use this on as close to my natural crease as possible so if you had to move your crease this is the point that you follow the line that you've created I'm just going to run that through my natural crease line keeping quite tiny circles because obviously I don't want to completely hide that flamingo colour there's still a bit of a sliver of it we can see just there and then just 
kind of blends that into the yellow a little bit there. This is where I was saying, because I want a little bit more control, I've come a bit closer up the brush. But normally, I hold the brush right at the end there. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that just on the outer edge of the mobile lid. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm slowly getting back into um, filming, but normally you would, I'm filming this on Tuesday, normally I would have had this ready for Tuesday so that it would have gone live at um, 6am UK time, but I just... I was just in so much pain over the weekend, I couldn't film, basically. It was as simple as that. Um, I was also having a bit of a... a bit of a depressed pity party, feel sorry for myself day, yesterday. Um, I'd only had about an hour's sleep. Because the cellulitis on my legs was, was really keeping me awake. Um, it was feeling like I got about six or seven knives digging into my leg overnight. So I spent a lot of the night sitting up on the edge of the bed so I wasn't sort of disturbing the hubby and just trying to, you know, rub the side of my leg and see if I could ease it off a bit. But So yesterday I was very much feeling sorry for myself. Uh, I suffer from depression anyway. Uh, I think anybody with chronic pain ends up with depression because I mean I, I spend every day, every day in pain. If I woke up without pain I think I would have died overnight. And I'm being quite serious when I say that. Um, there's not a minute, day or night, that I'm not in pain. The morphine that I take dulls it enough for me to be able to move. But it never actually gets rid of it. So... At the moment I'm just, before I was kind of pushing through and forcing myself to film even when I was feeling crap, um, but then I ended up paying for it because it would build up and build up and build up and eventually ended up where I had those two weeks without any uploads, uh, which I don't want to have to do again. Right, I'm going to go into Nosheen, or Nashi, Nosheen? Yeah, Nosheen. The print on here is... Um, like a uh, an a shiny copper, which is a little bit difficult sometimes to read against the green. What I'm going to do with that is I'm literally just going to darken up the very outer V, just fractionally. This is a really nice sort of black currenty colour. I just wanted a little bit more definition on that V because I was I thought that trunk would be a bit of a deeper raspberry than it was. So just deepen it up a little bit with this one. And then it's the fun time of adding shimmers to the lid. Yeah, I will eventually get back to my, my three uploads a week. Um, you're just going to have to be patient with me for a little while, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Now, as always, you never put a pressed, you never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. I've got this sort of, it's either a lip brush or an eye. Thin eyeshadow packer brush, one of the two. 
and once I've applied the pigment to it I'll be using this Makeup Obsession Fit to Fix to um, wet the brush. I'm going to go in with Annie. Very, very soft shimmers. Very soft. So don't don't dig your brush in or you end up with a hole, basically. Quite crumbly this one. But um, crumbly but creamy if that makes any sense. It's kind of a creamy texture but it does crumble when you're kind of picking it up a bit. Right, this ferrule is now damp so I need to tuck it into my knuckles and spin to dry it off because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the bristles. And then I'm going to use this. I, I do this with most shimmers because to be honest it helps prevent fallout. Um, I could have done a cut crease but I like to see how much base pigment there is to a shimmer when I first use them because some are designed more as topper shades um, so I like to see whether they've got enough base pigment in them to kind of go over any other shadow that they may meet I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to buff those edges there and I'm just going to dry the brush with the flannel or washcloth you can use any um, anything really to clean the brush with. I've got microfiber cloths, I've got washcloths. You can use, uh, if your tea towels have gone thin and worn a hole, then just cut them down into, you know, washcloth sized pieces, hem the edges, and you've got brush cleaners basically. The old mate doing men days from the 70s. Or if a sheet went home. We've got a hole in the middle and I'm just cut it in the middle and sew the two outside edges together so it lasts a bit longer. Or it get cut down into pillowcases, one of the two. Right now this side, because I've got this super deep creasing here from where it was pulled around as a kid, I do have to stretch the lid out. Now normally you'll find me telling you don't do this. Um, because it will end up damaging your lid but if I don't what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in those creases rather than being blended out and then ends up as it dries flaking into my eye and down my face through the day but you can see I've only pulled that out just far enough to straighten the creases I've not pulled it right out to my ear roll and I'm letting go very gently so as soon as I've covered the area I then let go you can see there's a lot more movement in this lid than there was in this one um, and this was pulled around when I was five six years old so you're talking 40 years ago um, and I'm kind of I really started to notice it about three or four years ago. Prior to that, it wasn't really that much difference um, between the two lids. But you know, the last last two or three years, I've really noticed a big difference. Okay, I quite like that. There's not a huge amount of fallout from those, which is good. That's what we like to see. Right. I'm going to pause you my lovelies while I pop some base products on um, and I will be back imminently uh, to finish off this eye look with you. 
I've got a bit of a wait now until I speak to you next, but for you, my darlings, it is absolutely instant. Uh, so I'll see you after this wibbly bit. I am back. As usual, I did my soap brow technique uh, with the pink honey. Uh, the honey glue in a strawberry sherbet. And I went over it with shade bark. I've also been trying out Barium's freckle tint. I got the light medium. Uh, I just thought I'd put a few, a few dibbly dots on. See what, see whether I like it or not. Because I do think freckles are pretty, but I'm not entirely sure my application is really top notch right yet my darlings right I'm going to go in with a, a fillet to brush and I'm going to go into hmm it's a very good question which shade am I going to go into I think I'm going to go into Cardinal, which is the orange that I've not used yet. And I'm going to run that along the lower lash line. It's really unusual for me if I've got a palette with a green and a purple in it to not do a green or a purple. But clearly I wasn't in the mood for that today. Mercs don't like me. How many of you thought I was going to go for that green and that purple, huh? This arrived and I'd had the palette about three days before I swatched it. Because I'm like, it's so pretty, I don't want to ruin it by swatching it. Do you ever get like that with your palettes, or is that just me? Oh, it sounds like the dustbin men have arrived. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped but chunky. But I may. Um, but you can use any smudge or brush. And I'm going to go into Flamingo, seeing as though I kind of covered her up quite a bit on the top lash. So let's give her her moment and let her blow out the bottom lash instead. Um, Pleased to report that the Barry M Green um, pencil that I use, the High Vis Strobe Liner, as with the BH Cosmetics ones, they're what do they call those power pencils? I can actually put them in my waterline without them making my eyes stream like mad. Uh, which is highly unusual um, but I don't really have a colour that will work with this I've got a luminous green a seafoam green a silver and a white so they're all a little bit the wrong tone for this look but um, it's rare for me to be able to use anything on my, my waterline anyway so normally I would just be blowing out the lower lash line like this. Uh, I've always had super, super sensitive eyes. Add to that, my fibro makes my eyes run. Add to that, hay fever. And uh, yeah, it's not a good combination. Right, this is a lip brush that I bought off of eBay well over 10 years ago. And I am going to go into the Manasa shade, which didn't show up too well on the swatch. I'm going to try that in my inner corner. And I've not wet the brush. Okay, that's quite pretty. 
It is very, very subtle still. I wonder if wetting will help. That's next door putting a plug in, by the way. I don't know how to do things quietly. Put this up under the tail of my brow as well, just to give it a bit of lift, because it has got like a pinky shift to it. So. Let's see if I do wet the pigment to see if that helps. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Dry the brush off. Have a look at my lovely hairline. Uh. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I know I'm being sarcastic now, but when I mention at the start of all my films that the reason I zoom in that close is so that nobody misses out, we need people are going, you zoom in too close, you need to zoom out more. If that's what you want, go and watch one of the other millions of YouTube channels that are out there that do that. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some mascara on, some highlight, some lippy, do something with the hair and I'll be back again after this wibbly bit, it'll be instant for you. I am back. Okay, I used my Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. The highlight and lippy, I picked up this little mini set from Fenty. This is a little mini how many carrots? How cute! And a mini lippy in fussy, uh, the gloss that is. So that's the beautiful shine I have going on today. Uh, but of course, we are talking about Yasmin. Um, obviously, I've used all of the top row, just over half of the middle row and a couple off of the bottom row. So I've used about two thirds of the palette, roughly. So far, I really like them. Um, obviously I've not tried the green or the purple yet. Those are the testers because warm tones are reasonably easy to make. Um, so I would be very surprised if this hadn't blended well. That being said, the deeper shades you can still have issues with, but I didn't with this. There wasn't a huge amount of fallout, uh, even with the shimmers once I'd wet the brush. They blended together without too much trouble at all, um, and maintained their colour. They didn't blend away and they didn't go muddy. So far, I'm really happy with this. Um, I will continue to play with it uh, off camera and let you know if my opinion changes but right now I am perfectly happy to give a, a two thumbs up for this palette and to say to you crack on with using my code. It's not affiliated, I don't earn from it. Um, but you save 10% I don't know if this is limited. I know a couple of her palettes she said are limited edition. She did that a lot with Blush Tribe. She'd have a very limited run on the palettes. Sometimes she brought them back, like um, with the Paulina palette that came back uh, for one restock. Um, but the Full Fusion palette never came back for a restock. Um, so bear that in mind if there is a palette that really is calling to you get it sooner rather than later just in case it is going to disappear and not come back um, 
she has said that she won't be repeating colour schemes from Blush Tribe. So it'll be interesting to see what she produces going forward. Um, as I said, the other two palettes that she had, um, this sort of size, didn't really call to me that much. Uh, one of them was just your, your standard rainbow palette. And the other one had more um, sort of dusky reds and greens in it. Um, but I've got quite a few palettes with those colour stories in already, so I wasn't overly worried about it. But this Yasmin one definitely called to me, and I am glad that I waited and uh, did the pre-order, got it through and played with it. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this look. Um, if you are a regular for F a Beauty family member, please double check you are still subscribed. People are still being unsubscribed, but my films are still appearing in your news feed in some occasions, so it's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed. Now, there is an issue at the moment with the notification bell. I would still say ring it, check it if you've already rung it and chosen all, because all of my notification bells got knocked back to a uh, customised um, or whatever it was they they chose they they they'd called it. Whereas I'd had them set for all, even though I took the bell off, put the bell back on, and chose all notifications, I'm still not getting emails through. I messaged YouTube on Twitter, and they said, "Oh yes, we decided we were going to stop sending that because it was cluttering people's emails up." We decided if we wanted those emails, if we wanted them, they weren't cluttering our emails up. Uh, but knowing YouTube, they'll probably change that back again in a couple of weeks without telling us. So it's still worth sticking your bell on and choosing all notifications. And then maybe one day you'll actually get an email through. Who knows? I mean, YouTube doesn't even tell its creators what it's doing, let alone the, the viewers, so... Talk about the blind leading the blind through a foggy forest. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I'm glad you stumbled over this film. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm not always like this. Sometimes I'm uh, slightly more bizarre, other times I'm slightly less bizarre. It just depends what you get on which day, on uh, what my pain levels are like, whether my pain pills have kicked in, whether I've had too much coffee in the morning, you know, all these things combined. If, however, you've enjoyed this film and you want to become a member of the 4F family, it's super easy to do. Uh, you know, you just, you, you just hit that red subscribe button and you turn it grey. Then you can ring my bell if you like and choose all notifications. But as I said, whether you get any emails or not, I. who knows. But I have got an awful lot of other films you can watch in the meantime. Uh, I've got other product reviews like this with tutorials. Uh, I've just got straightforward makeup tutorials on specific looks. Uh, I've got challenges. I've got tags, I've got collabs, I've got my Zodiac series that I really must catch up with. Um, I even read you my favourite poem. I mean, there's going to be something to interest you. I've even got a mini tutorial playlist where I talk you through things like wing liner, where to put blush, bronzer and contour, how to apply false lashes, how to decide on your eyebrow shape and uh, properly ascertain exactly where your eyebrows should start, stop, and whether they should be bumping them or not. So, uh, you know, feel free to, if you want some me time, basically grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, and indulge, my darlings. Right. In the meantime, as ever, 
that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.